Hello, my name is Marina Fortea and I'm a PhD student. I'm going to explain you how to perform an immunofluorescence protocol. First of all, we have to obtain gastrointestinal biopsies. In our case, and depending on the part of the gastrointestinal tract, we will use an endoscopy or a colonoscopy. After it, we introduce the tissue in a fixative solution, which is in our case paraformaldehyde, and it will stay there between 3 hours and overnight depending on the tissue. Later, it will go into different uh, battery of baths, in this case water, ethanol and xylem, and after it we will embed it in paraffin and will stay overnight again. Next day, we will yeah, we will include the tissue in a cassette using these metal boxes. Then the tissue is ready to be cut, in our case in, in, with the slides between 4 and 5 micrometers, and we will put it in a, in a slide of glass. Now the tissue is ready to perform any kind of immunofluorescence staining we desire, but first of all we have to see if the structures of the tissue and the orientation during the inclusion has been the properly. So for it, we will perform anematoxylinios in the staining. After it, we can, st we can start with the immunofluorescent staining. The first part is the deparaffination and the rehydration process in which we take out the paraffin and we rehydrate the tissue. Then the antigen retrieval, which is necessary because during the paraffin embedding protocol, some antigens are hidden and we have to re-expose them in order for the, our primary antibody to join the antigen. Then we have permeabilization step, protein blocking step, and now we are ready for our antibodies. To briefly illustrate what I've just explained, this is the microtome in which we cut the tissues, and this is the tissue included in a block of paraffin. We cut the tissues and we introduce them in a bath to make it easy to pick it with a glass slide. This is how a tissue with paraffin looks in a glass slide and this is how it looks after um, the paraffin removal. Then we circle it with Papen, which is a liquid, liquid blocker, hydrophobic, to maintain the drop on the tissue. And now our tissue is ready for any incubation. After the incubation of the primary and secondary antibody, we will perform a contrast staining with TAPI to analyze better the structure of the tissue. And then it's ready for going to the microscope. Once in the microscope, we can see in blue the DAPI staining for all the nuclei of the tissue, and in this case, in red, a structural protein, which is beta-actin, staining in the apical part of the enterocytes, also between cells and in the cells of the lamina propria, but also we can perform a double staining in which we can look for two different proteins. The ones on the picture are membrane proteins and we can see single cells in red and in green, but also we can see double expressing cells as a mix of colors. To store them, we recommend a dark box like this and only a few days in the fridge, but if you want to maintain the fluorescence better and longer, we recommend to store it at minus 20. Hope this protocol will be helpful for your research and good luck with your statements.